Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rifter number 11. This is segment three. We are going to go over some question and answers that, that the people at Palladium often get and wanted to clear up. Now, this was 24, 25 years ago, and maybe you still have these questions today, and this will help you. This is why I'm doing it. So let's do it. Boom, let's do it. Oh, right, right. there, Q&A. Wow, already ready to go? Already ready to go. All right, welcome to the first in a series of question and answer columns for the Rifter. We at Playdium Books receive a lot of questions about the various books over the internet. The internet is new at this point. AOL. Prodigy. Yeah, AOL. <laughs> you have mail. That's, that's what's going on right now. Uh, but if you do not have access to the net, getting to these answers can be a bit of a problem. That's why we have decided to do this column. We cannot present all of our archives at one time, but we can bring you a selection of answers. So... You know, if 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 I read other question and answers uh, in in upcoming rifters that I think have really good, you know, really good answers to some really common questions, then I'll do the segment again. But this one is a gimme just to show you what's going to happen in the future rifters coming along. Okay, so modern energy and missile weapons. Check that out. Boom. All right, how many attacks does my character start out with? Well, all characters, unless otherwise stated, start out with two attacks per melee, plus those gained from hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is common in every Palladium game, except Ninjas of Super Spies and Mystic China. Uh, the, these both have uh, martial arts forms that override whatever other attacks you get. You just get this many attacks. I'm so good at martial arts, I get less attacks. <laughs> but as a trade-off to that, you get to do more stuff early on. You get more tricks, more combat tricks. So that's what you get. Everyone in the Palladium as of second edition forward, except for Ninja Super Spies and Mystic China, you, you are born with two attacks per round and then learn everything else. Do I add my physical strength damage bonus to mega damage melee weapon attacks? Do I add my physical strength damage bonus if I have supernatural strength? The answer is with SDC damage and MD damage, no, you don't. If you possess supernatural strength or robotic strength, the normal punch damage, if mega damage, can be added to the damage inflicted with a mega damage melee weapon. Again, PS damage bonus do not apply to this. This is a this is a special example that I got into, I think, one time, where if you have uh, if you have a mega damage weapon and you are a, and you do mega damage, your supernatural or robotic strength, it will do extra damage, but it's not a physical damage bonus, like. Uh, let's say you have a strength of 20. You would have a plus four or five uh, damage bonus, but that's only for SDC damage. Only for that. If you have a supernatural strength of 20, you don't do regular damage anyway. You go off the supernatural strength chart or you go off the robotic strength chart, which is a much higher level of base damage. So they don't add in physical strength bonuses to that damage because you're already doing more. But you do combine damage types, and that's yes. what that example says there. Yes. So if if it's if it's a mega damage bonus, then yes, it will, it it, it will in increase your mega damage that that you're that you're doing. But if it's a physical strength bonus, never. Your physical strength bonus will never increase your mega damage if you have if you're doing mega damage with normal melee attacks. Uh, what exactly do I need to to roll to hit? <laughs> well, it depends on your range. Here we go. Here it is. Big time right here. If the target is less than 60 feet away, that's melee damage and close range. You need a five or better to hit. Okay, these numbers the are, target... by the way, are different than what's in the current Rifts book. I'm just saying that. I know. I know. Calm down. If the target is between 61, that's a typo, and 200 feet, it's an eight or better to hit. More than 200 feet is a 12 or better to hit. A called shot is a 12 or better to hit no matter what, no matter what range you are. If you're throwing grenades, you will need a six or better instead of the normal five or better. Wow. I don't remember that rule at all. No, I don't remember that rule either. When I read this, I was like, what? I don't remember that. But there it is. Now, is this 
specific to every single Palladium game? No, that's that's the one thing that Palladium that I don't like. All of its combat systems throughout throughout its different genres are a little bit different. A little bit different. Just like Max said earlier, in Rifts, it's not like this. And but I only in... know that because when I was looking up the rules for, uh, well, first of all, for how I was putting my game together, but also for the video I did and how to do melee combat, because after that I was going to do range combat, it says 120 feet is uh, is 8 or better. Yep. Basically, it says uh, 120 feet or less, it's a 5 or better. 120 feet or more, it's an 8 or better. Yep. And this one, they, they gave it a, a third option. 200, 200 or more is 12 or better. Yeah, that's the way it is. What do what is what I need to hit? A natural roll, or do bonuses get added before seeing if it hits? Bonuses do get added before determining if a strike is successful. Now, personally, I don't use this. Neither I do house I. rule this out. If you roll a one through four, you deserve to miss. You suck. Die in a hole. That's it. But the rules as written, the bonuses apply before the b- before you discover the threshold. So if you roll a two, but you have and and this is a, this is to punch somebody. You roll a two, but you have a plus three to hit. You roll a five. It's a hit. They have to parry or dodge, or roll with punch. One of the other. By the way, we one. came from different parts of the world because <laughs> when we met and Andrews, we have the same rule. I do the same thing. A one to four is a miss. Yep. I don't care what your modifiers are. It's a it's a miss. Goodbye. Yes. Because after you get to say level three or four, that means you're never gonna miss. Right. And I don't believe in that. Yeah, I don't believe in that either. There's always a chance, no matter how good you are, that you're gonna miss. But it's a twenty percent chance of miss. Well, close. Yeah. But this is real life combat. I mean, if you go on a range and and you have a target that's just 20 feet away and you can hit it every time, when you're in actual combat, that's different. Giving you a 20% chance to miss is generous. In real life, it's more like 50-50 at that point. All right. Are there any penalties for hitting targets that are moving or beyond effective range? You can fire most weapons beyond their effective range, but their effectiveness rapidly decreases. Firing beyond effective range is at no bonus to strike and a minus four penalty to strike for every 25 feet beyond the range. So if you have a weapon that has a 200 yard range, you're firing at someone at 210 yards. You didn't know you didn't have a spotter. You you thought he was in there, but he ends up being at 210. That means you get no bonuses to hit. But if he's at 227, not only do you get no bonuses, but you're at minus four for every 25 feet beyond effective range. You know what? Incorporate, and we'll see what other rules pop up, but incorporating this rule right here might make me t- uh, say, okay, you know what? One to f- I don't care, uh, you know, one, two, three, four. If your bonuses give you a hit, it's a hit because I can still outrange you then. I can still give you the penalties through range or whatever. But on the core yeah. rules, no. I get it. I get it. Moving targets are generally fired upon at a minus three to strike while there's a minus six penalty to strike anything speeding 40 miles per hour or more. Both these answers appear in ninjas and super spies. I don't know why he said that and not the answers for everything else, but there you go. So a moving target that's under 40 miles an hour, minus three to hit a moving target over 40 miles an hour, minus six to hit. Now notice it did not negate your bonuses to hit. It just gave you an additional minus. So you're basically eating into your bonuses at this point. Unless you're really low level, then it ends up being a net negative. Do I use physical prowess strike bonuses with modern energy and missile weapons? You do not use physical prow bonuses with these weapons. A lot of people make this mistake. We did. We we made that we made that mistake when we were younger. (laughs) We've made this mistake before and we convinced ourselves we were right, but we were wrong. Because the weapon proficiency modern skills give you bonuses to strike with that weapon that build up over levels. That's what it's supposed to be for. Your physical prowess is just for hand-to-hand and thrown. That's it. So, no, your physical prowess does not increase your to-hit chance with ranged weapons. 
What bonuses can be used with these weapons apart from weapon bonuses? Well, I just told you the weapon bonuses give you bonuses. Well, what, generally, any bonuses intrinsic to the weapon, like sights or balance or whatever. If it is an exceptional weapon, it will give a general bonus that will add on. But that's it. You know, an that last sentence. That last sentence is so important because I've seen people argue this tooth and nail. The sniper skill for single shots with rifles also applies in some circumstances. I've seen people argue. It says just with rifle, blah blah blah. Uh, I, I don't remember the verbiage of it. I don't take that skill usually. But the, the point is, I've seen people argue the super. It's like, nope. I should get it whenever I'm shooting it. This just means I'm a better shot. No, no, it literally no. says the word sniper, and when it you read the, the description itself, of it, it's about sniping. Exactly. You have to be sniping. Single shot, one target, aimed, go. Then you get your bonus. Do I add physical prowess bonuses to throwing items? Yes. Yes, you do. Throwing items, definitely. Throw a rock, you get your PP bonus. Throw a grenade, you get your PP bonus. Throw a knife, same thing. What is the penalty in rifts to dodge arrows, bullets, and energy weapons? The rule is covered in Mystic Russia. We will summarize it here. To dodge modern missile and energy weapons, you have a negative 10 penalty to dodge at short range, negative 8 penalty to dodge at long range, or when a lot of cover is available and no dodge bonuses apply to the roll. That means that juicers are boned. But juicers should be boned sometimes. They're they're too big. Alternatively, you can forfeit all your attacks per melee and do nothing but dodge. And in this case, you're at a minus six instead. So, modern weapons, arrows, bullets, and energy weapons. Now, in my game, I do arrows, bullets, and energy weapons differently. Arrows, I, I, I allow you to keep your dodge bonus when rolling because they are relatively slow moving i mean faster than a faster than a knife but much slower than a bullet and a lot bigger you can see it a lot better now bullets and energy weapons it you, you think that oh minus 10 penalty a dodge that's kind of lame that's a lot and i don't get any bonuses no dodge bonuses apply yeah it's a straight it's a straight roll minus 10 I mean, this is an energy weapon. Blink and you'll miss it. A bullet, blink and you'll miss it. Even a juicer is not like the flash. Right. Okay. Now, if, if you have if we're if we're playing Heroes Unlimited and and you you had three major powers because you had an amazing role and, and you took sonic speed three times, I I would be on the fence. I'd be like, okay. For you, time is is really subjective. So maybe well, also think about it die. this way: if you've heard the bullet, hey, you're still you're, alive because it's already hit you. Yeah, it, it hit you and you didn't die. Good job. <laughs> you know, that's it. That that's how it is. So yeah, I may not agree with the with the minus ten and no bonuses. I may eliminate your bonuses and do a straight d twenty roll because the the attacker has a great advantage because he gets to keep all of his bonuses to hit. So the way I did it was just minus 10. I didn't take away the bonuses. Okay, I would do it the other way. I would I would uh, take away the bonuses, not do the minus 10, and just be a straight D20 roll. I, I, the way I saw it was, you know, it's, it's hard to dodge it. Plus, you yeah. also have to know it's coming anyway. It's not one of those things where it's like, shoot, no, I just dodged. No, it says it very clearly in the rules, you have to be aware that the attack is coming. Yeah, but no, I was coming. like, if, yeah. if you have that kind of reaction, I'm not going to take that away from you. But it is still a bullet or a laser or whatever. So you, whatever your normal roll is, minus 10 and go. So, yeah, if you have a high PP or if you're a juicer or whatever, you still get all your bonuses. But tack that minus 10 on there so yes that juicer it has a much higher chance to dodge than me but he oh, can yeah. still be hit and there are some powers in heroes unlimited that that give you bonuses to to dodge bullets and energy weapons and even catch arrows and knives and stuff while in flight you know you there there are powers but the, that's just one genre that's an extreme example what penalties are there on wild shots if you have a weapon proficiency in the weapon, wild shots are done without penalty. If you do not have a weapon proficiency, you will have a minus six penalty to strike. Additionally, the game master may impose a minus one to minus four penalty to the wild shot for extenuating circumstances or extreme difficulty. Normally, wild shots are no bonus straight rolls. 
Straight roll, straight D20 roll. If you have the proficiency in that weapon. If you don't, you're at minus six. Or, you know, more than that, depending on the situation. It states that you can only do long bursts or entire magazine bursts when shooting wild. What happens if you're using a single shot or a pulse weapon? This is uh, for uh, uh, specific cases here. In these cases, the game master should assign an additional penalty of minus four to strike in addition to the standard penalties for shooting wild. Damage is for the single round or pulse shot that hits. If the shot misses, there's only a 10% chance of the round striking a bystander in the immediate area of the target. Okay. Now, what this talks about is long bursts and entire magazine bursts are considered shooting wild because you are definitely not aiming and you can't aim with all of that recoil and all of that chaos. It's not going to happen. But you're putting so many rounds down range that, damn it, when you hit something, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit hard. But what if you do it with a with a handgun that has a reactive trigger that you, now you're allowed to do burst shots with? Well, it's an extra penalty because this weapon wasn't built to do burst shots and you're not putting as many rounds down range as you would with an AK. So you get a you get a bigger penalty. I can make a lot of counters to that rule, but I wouldn't want to do that because it's a game. And at some point, I don't want to have literally every single weapon with every single possible bump stock or whatever they call them now with the pistols where you know turns them yeah. into automatic. I forget the name of it. Uh, all that stuff on there. It's just like people use silencers wrong. I don't care. Like It's a game. game. And yes, the silencer is going to be silent. It's not going to actually be what a silencer does, which is almost nothing. Uh, you know. Well, no. no I mean, I, I would rather shoot a gun inside a vehicle with a silencer than not. That's it's fair. Still you're, gonna still gonna have, you're, you're still going to have ringing hey, yeah, ears. It's still going to hurt, but there's, there's a less chance of my ears bleeding. Yeah. That's nice. Also depends how what long kind of- the silencer is and so many other things too, but sure. that's too much. That's too much for a game. It's too, yeah. Yeah. It's too in the weeds. This is a game. What penalties are there on called shots? All normal bonuses to strike when using called shots are halved. This represents a difficulty of the shot. Additional penalties may be applied for the size and difficulty of the target. I didn't know that. Wait, wait, all normal bonuses are halved. I did not halved. know that. Yes. These additional penalties are sometimes listed in the, t- in the statistics for various items or often assigned by the GM. The half bonuses rule, while not printed in riffs, appears in Heroes Unlimited and Systems Failure. Interesting. Again, no, I didn't know about that. The half. So half. Yeah. Called shots are at half bonus. Because there's already a 13. I just kind of applied, well, you need a 13 anyway. So, huh. Or is yeah, eleven? I forget whatever the numbers. So yeah, I I I, I just saw that as the penalty. I didn't realize it was half. So okay. Yep, it's harder and harder. Okay, here's a limited second edition and systems failure give a smaller penalty to dodge that can be easily negated. Why is it different in rifts? Can I use the rifts instead of the minus eight minus ten dodge rule? <laughs> Excuse me. The rule from these two books gives a minus four to dodge on a natural roll, and this penalty to dodge can be ignored if the dodger has the initiative or the attack is not aiming to kill. This provides a more cinematic, heroic feel to scenarios involving guns. Yes, you could replace the negative 8, negative 10 rule from Mystic Russia with the rule from Heroes Unlimited if you want a more cinematic or heroic game. You want your your juicer or your your whatever to be able to dodge these these things better. You know, to, to, to raise the level of power of your game. If you want to do that, then yeah. You turn that minus eight, minus 10 into a minus four with it, with a natural roll. That's fine. That's fine. But what max does is probably better just in a, in a more heroic game. Don't take away your, the opponent's bonus to dodge. And there you go. I don't know if it's better. It's just, I don't know if it's better, but it seems to make sense to me. So yeah, it seems easier, right? All right. What are the rules for parrying modern energy and missile weapons? What about thrown weapons? Parrying bullets, arrows, and energy blasts is possible, but a suitable object for parrying, like a shield weapon or piece of metal wood, is required. They cannot be parried with bare hands, unless you have a special (laughs) Heroes Unlimited powers. If parrying is attempted, it is done with none of the usual bonuses and with a minus eight penalty. Parrying thrown objects is easier, only a minus three penalty to an unmodified die roll. So you still don't, even, even with a knife or a rock, 
It's minus three with no bonuses, straight up minus three. I, I wonder what his rationale is for taking away the physical prowess bonus. Okay, you know what? Actually, I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. And so for, there's going to be a lot of chat that I'm not going to bring up later. These guys are talking a lot about firearms and so forth. By the way, I'm reading it. Good chat, guys. Keep it going. But uh, for this, what we're yeah. talking about. Okay. But the one of the things that came up is was like, well, why don't you get a physical prowess bonus to shooting? That doesn't make sense because if you know if you can control your body better, you have that physical prowess, you have that agility, you should be able to aim faster, more accurate, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you if you consider that at the same time that you don't get your physical prowess bonus when dodging a bullet, you don't get your physical prowess bonus when dodging a knife. I I. Accept the consistency of it. Okay. So for so, me, mm -hmm. in in my head, um, uh, a melee weapon is directly controlled at every moment by your hand. You are in physical contact with it at every moment. But with a handgun, it's not about your hand-eye coordination all the time. It's about your training. It's about your experience. How many rounds have you put down range? How much practice have you, has you, have you done? And that is reflected in your weapon proficiency levels. That's how you get better. By doing it more. Not just natural ability, training. Sure. Is what they leaned on for the ranged combat. Is it right? Is it wrong? That's up to you. I understand it. I mean, I don't always agree with it, but I understand it. Yeah, for the technical writer in me, clear, concise, consistent, and accurate, I really just think that it hits the consistent bug. If it's melee combat, unarmed or, or melee combat, you add it in. If it's ranged combat, you leave it out. Yeah, pretty much you're leaving it out, right? <laughs> yeah. What OCC slash RCCs or powers give bonuses to dodge and or parry missile modern energy weapons? Only select OCCs and powers offer superior bonuses. For Heroes Unlimited, a handful of super abilities provide bonuses, and the individual power description will detail what they are. In Rifts, only some OCCs give any bonuses, but some have argued that juicers and other extremely agile characters, like I've said earlier, should have bonuses to dodge. So if you wish, those with natural auto dodge should apply their dodge bonuses to help offset this penalty, though it cannot be used to give bonus to the die roll. Now, what they're doing here is is uh, okay as an as an as a optional but official change in combat rules you can use the juicer's bonus auto dodge bonus as a modifier uh for for the uh, for the minus so let, let's say a juicer has a plus four bonus to auto dodge okay and he's minus eight to dodge this energy blast well, now he's only minus four. Well, that would be it that would just become the system that I use. Yeah, it it mitigates the uh, the 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 detriment. But you, it, if you're a, if he has a plus eighteen to auto dodge, wow, and he's which you're probably not going to get. But okay, fine. You 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 power gamed your way into plus eighteen auto dodge. Good for you. But you're trying to dodge a laser blast. It's straight up roll, zero. You can't get positive. You can only mitigate all the minus. The Longbowman from the Palladium Fantasy RPG has superior bonuses only against arrows. That's written in, well, at least in second edition, that's written into it very yeah. clearly. Right. I played one. I know. <laughs> there you go. What is the standard rate of what is rate of fire standard in regards to energy weapons? Rate of fire standard means that the weapon is capable of firing single shots aimed or wild and is only capable of firing bursts if it mentions it in the weapon's description. Oh, so rate rate of fire standard means unless the specific weapon says otherwise. You shoot one time every time you press the trigger and that takes one action. That's it. The C-10 laser rifle, on the other hand, is capable of burst fire since it gives aimed, burst, and wild for its rate of fire. It gives burst as a rate of fire. The C-12 laser rifle, though, is only capable of firing single shots or short bursts of five rounds. Uh, how does rate of fire with archery work? The archery rate of fire replaces the character's normal hand-to-hand -hand attacks per melee. Each attack represents the ability to draw, load, and fire a bow or other missile weapon. 
This rate of fire is the maximum for that character and other factors such as getting ammunition, which is not readily available, will reduce the rate of fire, yep. i.e. drawing arrows from an open sheath or stuck to the ground as done as part of a rate of fire. But locating a special arrow or uncovering an, a covered sheath will re yep. reduce the number of bow attacks. As, as my longbowman, I had more attacks with my knives than I did with my bows at low level. Now, that changes pretty quickly with the longbowman, but you do have to level up to, uh, to make that happen. Also, there are weapon limitations which may affect rate of fire. Many crossbows may require a win windlasses or pulleys to arm the weapon. While the character may be able to fire four shots in a melee round, it may take one attack to shoot a crossbow and then spend the rest of the round reloading it for an yep. effective ROF of one. It's possible. Yep. That, that, that's, why, that's why in combat, if you're close enough to use a, 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 cro a, a, a hand crossbow, you fire it and drop it. You fire it, drop it, move on to another weapon. How do I combine my archery rate of fire with my hand-to-hand -hand attacks? Okay. Divide the character's normal hand-to-hand -hand attacks by the archery rate of fire to determine how many attacks or actions firing a bow is worth. For example, if the character has four attacks per melee and a rate of fire of two with his bow, each bow shot is worth two attacks. So you could fire a shot from your bow and then do two attacks, two normal knife attacks or whatever. But if you do, if you fire a shot from, if you, if you do uh, one attack with a knife, you can only make one more attack with your bow because that would be three total regular attacks and you only have one more and bows cost two. In and you case. have to, and you have to round up for the number of actions that it costs exactly. you. Exactly. So in your case, that's how it works. But each person is different depending on how many actions per round, how many, yeah, how many actions per round they have. Does the physical strength damage bonus apply to arrows and other missile weapons? No. Damage does not apply to arrows and other missile weapons. I hate this rule. I hate it. I hate it with a burning passion because it's so effing wrong. If you have a bow or crossbow that is properly strung for your strength, you will shoot harder and farther. Yeah, but that's the caveat. That's why they rate bows in like 55 pounds, 75 pounds, whatever else. So if if it's just a bow, I would say I agree with this rule. Yeah, if it is a bow that you bow, had made for you, then especially yeah, in a modern did it. Then, then yes. And yes. If if it's your bow and, and you have the weapon proficiency bow and you strung it, you strung it for your strength to maximize your potential. And guess what? you get strength bonuses in my game. If you pick up somebody else's bow, then you get what you get. Yeah, I, I don't know if it should equal strength. I mean, this is where things get really funky, though, because it's a game. I don't want to make it more difficult. I don't want to get so pedantic. But I wouldn't say that it would be a one-for-one -one trade off. I would say it'd be half your strength bonus because uh, arrows really don't all of a sudden start, you know, doing 100 points of damage just because you're really, really, really strong. I mean, <laughs> like... yeah. But if 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 a if a bow is is strung for someone with a strength of twenty, like to really pull, like it's work for them. But that means somebody with strength of eighteen can't pick up your bow and use yeah. it. That, that means if I pick up that bow, I'm eh, eh, I'm never going to be able to fire that bow. Right. So the, the, it 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 adds it adds you know realism a little bit of realism, but without making it too difficult. I like it. There are no rules for cover. What rules can I use <laughs> if someone is behind cover? Cover is explained in Heroes Unlimited, the GM's guide. To shoot at someone who has cover, you must do one of the following. Go around to his exposed side. Flush him out in the open. Use called shots, rolling a 12 or better to hit, including bonuses, to hit any part of him that is exposed. Shoot through or destroy the cover. Now, they every time I said cover here, I meant concealment because you can't shoot through cover, you can shoot through concealment. But if you if you're shooting at someone through concealment, it's the normal, I believe, minus nine, ten. Is it minus ten? Shooting blind is minus ten. What what penalty is there if, if I hit someone I cannot see? Minus nine. 
That's weird because the rule is minus ten for fucking blind. <laughs> okay, either way, fine. When you're minus attacking nine. someone you cannot see, you have a minus nine to your strike roll. This includes shooting at people who are invisible, concealed, or behind cover when shooting through the cover. Again, concealment. When concealment, yeah. <laughs> Palladium, like many role playing games, has a problem with the difference between the definition of cover and concealment. Yep. <laughs> All right, I could go on, but I'm not going to. All right. The, this you know as, i like as these why, see, why not <laughs> because i don't want to now as 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 we've seen throughout this thing a lot of you in chat and even us on stream have had you know have had feelings about some of this stuff you know now remember this is 24 years old so in the newer books it may be different just like max says no it's minus 10 in the newer books instead of minus nine well, specifically and, and for for blind fire, whatever whatever it is, for blind for for blind, attacking. which is how and, most people equate behind a cover, you know, behind cover. Right. And the uh, the the minuses for the range distances have also changed. I like this one better, but you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. In, in my opinion, whatever. But if 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 you want to get the rifter and 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 see the the rest of the question and answers, please do. But, uh, you know, especially because I, I think all of these questions uh, are really pertinent, not just to new players, but to Game Masters as well. If you don't have a Game Master screen or if you don't have the Game Master's guide for that particular thing, the, this Q&A is very helpful. Very helpful. And remember, this is Palladium. And if you ask Kevin a question on a lot of this stuff, he's going to say, do what works for you at your table. He's uh, going to cop out. He's going to cop well, out and say, you know, but, but he, whatever. but that's what he wants. It's a framework. I know so. it's what he wants. He wants to cop out. It's fine. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Uh, the, the, uh, the idea for a lot of this is, is if you want to make it so hyper realistic at your table that you have to figure out exactly how many pounds of force can penetrate your, your, uh, bronze slash iron armor at, uh, at a range of, uh, you know, 200 feet with, a, an arc of, uh, 30 degrees or something like that. You know, you can do the calculus on that, uh, on your yeah, own time. I don't, I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want, want I don't want, 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 want that in my game. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and a lot of the, honestly, the, lot of the commentary that was going on in chat was about, <laughs> Things like that. Things like, like that. Yeah, exactly. I see what you're saying, but I don't want that in my game because yeah, no, it is I don't a want that game. In, in everybody's game. No. All right. What do we have for comments? All right. So, uh, all right. Here we go. That's retarded. Bonuses are there for a reason. That's about you and I both doing the whole thing of one to four always misses. Yeah. I, you know what? And I understand. I get it. I get it. I just don't like the fact that after third level, everyone always hits. I don't know like the that. argument is, but you can. They still have to dodge. True. <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. But if they start out base, always succeeding. I don't believe in 100 percent success. That's yeah, right. sa same here. I mean, somebody did point in there. Well, how about just have one be a failure? Either way, you know, with, with those, uh, with that Q and A, I could actually see myself doing that if, as long as uh, those range modifiers and movement modifiers were used. We tend to avoid some of those in my games. Uh, I have all my players make a physical prowess check when reloading in the middle of combat. They pass, they reload in one action. If they fail, then it takes an extra action to complete it. Now, that is the an argument... extra step. Yeah, you know, we'll see an extra that... step for your game. Yeah, that was the argument. I was going to get your, your take on this. Some people are like, oh, that adds some verisimilitude. It also shows the effect of possible fear and you know whatever sure. else going on and, and just you know reaction. Other people are like, I don't want that in my game. It's not fun. We're just there to shoot people and run a, run around. And and this is an exact example of where this might be perfect for your game. Somebody else is going to look at that. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, and in, in the segment I did before this, talking about the, the, the range combat changes, they actually have a, a rapid reload ability that you get at certain level, you know, to, to rapid reload your weapon, John Wick style. You know, I mean, uh, if you want to use that plus this, that might be cool. I could dig that. The next one is similar in concept in terms of how people do things differently for the type of feel that they want at their table. It says, uh, my main house rule for non-fantasy Palladium games is that archery gets the same rate of fire as guns. Otherwise, archery just sucks across the board for everything, and sometimes archers add flavor. 
I understand why you do that, but I want you to understand that that is so unrealistic as to break reality. I mean, Legolas can do it because he's he's a little magic boy, but <laughs> regular people they they cannot pull out. There's an a arrow, reason why we use guns it. and not archery in the war. <laughs> yeah, pull out an arrow, notch it, pull back, aim, fire uh, as fast as I can do this. Bam, 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 bam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just no. That breaks immersion for me. But I do get it for a heroic feel or even for you to riffs game for your your kind of I mean, that's got heroism built into it as well. And if you got juicers and crazies and other weird stuff going on, I get it. But that, the point of me starring this one uh, was absolutely like if this is what works for the verisimilitude at your table for your setting. And I know Kevin won't be mad about that. No. And even if he was, it's your table and he's not going to flip it over anyway. He's not going to come and, and, you know, take your book away. And, of course, there were lots of comments about <laughs> our train arrows. Arrow weight and broadhead design are factors of damage. Draw weight doesn't matter at close range if the arrow does a complete pass through 20 yards as well as at 30 yards. Fair enough. Fair enough. And and to be fair, uh, there are di different base damages based on what kind of arrowhead you do have in the game. There are those things. It's, it's, it's in the contemporary weapons book. Definitely. Uh, D4, D6, D8, stuff like that. Base damage. Yeah. I Again, it. it's a game. Yeah. I don't want to deal with this stuff. I want to just say how much damage you roll. Like I said, I understand, and I think Eden Doug's the same thing. We understand that, you know, if the draw strength is going to be more, hmm, maybe there should be some sort of advantages to it. I think somebody yeah, in some chat said it should fly farther. Okay. Yeah. Just add it at your... You know, just just add that at your table, what you think makes sense. But I would caution against this one. Not that I don't like it necessarily, but I'd caution against this one because that does, like Eden Doug was saying, does take it out of the realm of reality. If you want that heroic game, go for it by all means. But you have to be careful that what you're doing doesn't make take something out of the scope of its intended behavior. And guns replace bows. That's just right. the way it is. That's how it works, man. <laughs> that, that is the, the progression of technology. Guns are better in all, in almost every way than bows. That therefore you use guns, not bows. You still you use bows, good on you. you. You got flavor, but what you're lacking is rapid fire ability. And now they're arguing over what because I said calculus instead of geometry. It doesn't matter. It's a term. It's a turn of phrase. <laughs> all right. <keep laughs> and going, now they're arguing going. what skill it would be in riffs. This is great. All right. <laughs> anyway with that um that was cool like like i said i actually like that i um i might have to because i do have the pdf of it uh, i yeah. might have to take a look through that because i think those q and a's were good and then you folks out there that might this might be one it of the really, it the really riffers excited you, you guys that that, that q and a got you guys fired up <laughs> yeah yeah it did it actually got chat moving that's that's true uh but uh but the other thing is those remember kevin and sean they're like hey if there are other riffers you guys want to see that they can you know, put that little label on their archive copy or whatever, but at least get us a, phys a new physical copy of it. This might be one that's worth having. Yeah. And and just, just like it said in the beginning, this is the first of a planned many Q&A sections. <laughs> I hope I don't think the rules supersede. Well, remember when Rifter number 11 said this? Well, now Rifter number whatever says this other thing. So, <laughs> what do I do? Oh, no. Well, guess what? The higher Rifter. number Rifter. Yeah. Higher number, well, higher Rifter, number Rifter. Rifter. Yep. Supersedes old could be one or... Hey, they're rifters, right? They're not official rules. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, what Max is what? Hiding from the math basic question. He won't give us the answers we need about the math skill. Yeah, you know what? I didn't um, see it. <laughs> is it calculus or is it... Uh, Geometry. Geometry. Well, uh, here's, here's what I'll tell you about Max personally, and then we'll end the segment. Um, Max back in school was absolutely amazing at geometry and trigonometry. Algebra and calculus, well, calculus, some of it was when we were doing a lot of the graphing portions of it, derivatives, you know, I, eh. um, I was okay. Algebra, I suck donkey balls. And it's backward of like 90% of people. But, you know, sine, cosine, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I could easily whip through that stuff, but I couldn't do simple algebra. So figure that one out. All right. So I, I had math advanced, but not math basic. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough.
All right. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Are you going to do that new game next week? Or I'm going to try, man. I, I've okay. been trying to get into it, and I just I, I can't find the. It's you know what? It's it's too long to explain right now. Okay, sounds good. Well, we'll have something for you for segment two next week, so look forward to that. And, of course, if you have a Rifter, you all know we're doing the Rifters in order, but if you have a Palladium book you want us to cover, or really any other book you want us to look at as an overview, post in the comments, and uh, you know we'll see where we can fit it in. <laughs>